Okay, I wanted to do a little bit of a short stream. Um, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Who knows? Not not that long. But I wanted to do a short stream for, um, yeah, uh, um, about Python. Because I thought, well, that could be interesting. Because Python is actually one of the languages I wanted to learn. Um, so I thought, why not look at it on stream and see if we can learn together, right? So Python is a very simple language and has very straightforward syntax. It encourages programmers to program without boilerplate, yeah, sure, prepared code, sure. The simplest directive in Python is print directive. Yeah, okay, it prints, sure. It also, okay, that's actually important that it does a, a new line, right? This is, that is good to know. There are two major, yeah, Python 2 and 3, yeah. Yeah, sure, Python 3 is the new version, makes sense. Um, huh, okay. Sure. Run, okay. Sure. What is actually a good Python editor? Uh, for Python. I'm guessing it's just, yeah, Visual Studio Code, right? Or PyCharm. What is PyCharm? I've read about... Oh! PyCharm is from... Um, the um, e IntelliSense uh, guys. That does look interesting. Right, so wait. So I wanted to look for the... Um, uh, best Python uh, ID. Right. So we have, according to this, we have the option between PyCharm, yeah, and basically VS Code. Sure. Mm hmm. Code editor, navigation, refactoring, debugger, test runner, sure. Python profiler, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Visual Studio Code. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Visual Studio Code. I might actually have it installed. No, I don't. Okay, so let's get Visual Studio Code downloading. Um, just while we do this. It, because it would be nice to have a... Um, um, a proprietor, right? Okay. But sure, the, uh, the print makes a lot of sense. So implementation. Okay. So in Python, use annotation for blocks instead of curly braces. Okay, both tabs and space are supported, but the standard annotation requires for space. Oh, that's disgusting. Right. And then for spaces. Sure, so, yeah. Sure, so this is if statement, and then we say it is a block, right? Sure. Exercise, yeah. Yeah, so it would just be hello world instead. Right, sure. Uh, oh, wait, that should be correct. Oh, let's... Oh, yeah, I think it's not correct because I don't have the exact syntax. Ah, hello, world. Right. There we go. And then run. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Great job. Thank you. Um, Let's get the Visual Studio installer going. Right, I accept. Let's move this to my different screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So next, variables and type. Okay. Python is a complete object oriented, not statically typed, so you do not need to declare variables before using them or declare their type. Okay. So each variable in Python is an object. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, there we go. So can I just make... um. Uh, a new can I make just uh, how do I can I make like a project here uh, file okay so I can just do a new file and um, or do I need like a Python extension for this right um, so I would call this um, uh, so if I do just print um, Hello world, right? Does this simply work then? 
And then if I go, uh, but it doesn't know the, the type, does it? Uh, so let's put this in a, um, a proper thing, right? Documents. Um, right. Right. So I put the, I got this in a folder. So I think we can just do this as a Python. Yeah, there we go. So this would be, um, uh, yeah, test.py, right? And then we say go, I'm guessing, or run, start debugging. Okay. Uh, can I? Yeah, Python. There we go. So install Python. Okay. So is there anything else for Python we need? Uh, Python for VS Code. And is it okay? But this isn't like official. This is made by Microsoft. Okay. Sure. Huh, doc string. Okay, there are, so I mean, I guess there are a couple things in here. But yeah, for now, let's just get the, um, this one. Okay. So now we should be able to run, start debugging, and then Python file. Right. Oh. Okay. Oh, we need more Python things. Okay, sure. Um... Right, so we select the, um, okay, yeah, useful commands, sure. So I would need to select in here the Python interpreter. Okay, whatever. Oh. So if I go run, start debugging, Python file. What the? Okay, how do I use Visual Studio? Uh, Visual Studio Code. I was like, this is probably going to be easy, right? Um, but clearly it isn't. Um, yeah, I mean, I should be able to select the Python one, right? Oh, huh. okay. Do I need, like, some sort of main function? Maybe I do. Um, okay, let's just restart actually Visual Studio Code, right? Because maybe it just doesn't, uh, right, test of pi, right? And then go start debugging Python. Uh, Okay, so this is the PyPlays. Okay, sure. Let's just uh, install that. Whatever Microsoft wants, right? Um, yeah, sure. Okay, there we go. Uh, yes, and reload. Thank you. Um, oh, but, oh, so apparently I need to download Python. Okay, sure. That makes sense. Yeah, no wonder I can't run it if I don't have Python installed. That makes sense. Okay. So while that's downloading, let's continue with this, right? So numbers. Um, Python support two types of numbers, integers, and floats. Okay. Co complex numbers. Okay. So we don't have doubles. We don't have shorts. We just have integers and... Oh, no, no, no. Right. No, no, no. These are not types. These are just the... Okay, sure. So this would be, okay. Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, close. Visual Studio Code, do you now run, start debugging? Mm -hmm. we, we will get there, we will, oh, run. Oh, there we go, okay. <laughs> Python was not found. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe I just need the uh, interpreter. I don't know. Uh, all right, okay. Sure. The final floating point number, you may use one of the following notations. Okay, so we say just a dot. Okay, yeah, print my float. 
or we say, yeah, we actually specify, okay, it's a float. Sure, that makes sense. Both produce the same uh, results. So strings are defined single quote or double quotes. Okay, doesn't matter. But I'm guessing single quotes would be normally chars. Okay. So far, so good. That's easy. The uh, difference between the two is that double quotes make it easy to include a pass. Yeah, okay. Okay, sure, yeah. That makes sense. I mean, we're kind of going through this quite fast. So let's see if this now... All right. There we go, Python. Now it's selected. And now I should be able to run it. There we go. Hello, world. We got Visual Studio Code working. That's cool. Um, next up, right. Um, so there are additional variations of the defining strings that make it easier to include uh, carriage returns, backslashes, and Unicode characters. These are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but are covered in the Python documentation. Okay, simple operation. Operators can be executed on numbers and strings, right? So one, two, and then print three. Yeah, that would just be print three, sure. And hello world, and that just hello world. Yeah, right. It's because these would just uh, con concatenate. Okay, it's very simple. Um, I did. Oh no. Did I do that? Let me check that real quick. I. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I definitely did. Oops. I definitely did. Thank you for notifying me I yeah I definitely messed that up thank you very much for uh, notifying me man um, right. okay there we go that should be should be fixed now okay so string con concatenation is very simple in Python okay because this, yeah, just, just runs Hello World. Okay. Yeah, so this is just like any other languages. We can just say A and B and then three and four. Okay. But we can also print multiple variables. What's well, pretty cool. Okay. So mixing operators between numbers and string is not support. Okay. So I can't do, I can't do this. This will just crash. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That makes sense. The test of the exercise is to create a string, an integer, and a floating point number. The string should be named my string and should contain the word hello. The floating point should be named my float and should contain the number 10 low. Sure. And the integer. Yeah. Okay. So that would just be uh, hello. Uh, hello. My float would be 10 low. And my int would be 20. And that should be it. And if we run that, that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So, so far, Python, I don't encounter anything too special. The annotation is tripping me a bit up, but I suppose I can get used to that very, very quickly. Because I'm, I'm so used to like having brackets, right? To indicate scope. But in here, it's just indentation. Uh, lists are very similar to array. They contain, they can contain any type of variable and they and contain as many variables as you wish. This can be iterated over in a very simple manner. Here's an example. Of, yeah, on how to build a list. Okay. So we have my list. What is just an array? Okay. Now we append. And I'm guessing this is the index that we append at. Okay. Sure. And then we say 0, 1, and 2. Okay. And then 4x. Yeah, okay. So this is just a, a range based for loop. Okay. So that runs. But do I need this the other ones yeah so it's index out of range so this would be up appending just the index i was kind of thinking maybe i can just like append three okay okay so they just print one two three okay so yeah so print my list oh no of course right no no I see what, what it's doing. I, I didn't read the code correctly, right? So it appends like the value one, right? Then the value two, value three, it's just an array. And I just print zero, one, two, and three. Okay. Access in an index, which does not exist. Yeah, sure. You can't access out of bounds. 
basic programming stuff, exercise, okay. In this exercise, you will need to add numbers and strings, uh, the correct list using append list. Okay, yeah. One, two, and three, two, yeah. You also you will also have to fill in the variable second name with the second name in the list using the bracket. Yeah, sure. Note that the index is zero based. Yeah, okay. So if numbers um, numbers dot append uh, one. And then numbers dot append two and numbers dot append uh, three, right? And then strings should have uh, strings dot append uh, append. And it should be hello and uh, string dot append world. Okay. And of course, it needs to be in brackets because it's a function, right? Um, zero based. Okay, so what else that we need to do? Yeah, string variable. You also have to fill in second name. Okay, so it would be Eric. Right. Um, oh, wait, I have to use the oops. So that's... Uh, name store one right and then run okay cool that's easy so next up is basic operators okay it's slowly getting more interesting um i mean i'm kind of, i think i'm gonna be blazing through like quite a lot of these because i'm not expecting like any major like programming hurdles right because python is supposed to be very very simple and i am like I have experience with programming, right? So it should be relatively simple. It's just mainly the syntax that I need to learn. I hope. And then once the basics is there, the interesting part is going to be to learn the libraries and like making cool things with it. So, right, arithmetic operators. Uh, just any other programming language, the additions of, yeah. Cool, so we can just do basic math, right? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, so we have modulo. Um, oh, okay, this is actually useful to know. So using mix a power relationship. Okay, so this is cubed and this is squared. Okay, that's actually, that's very cool. It would actually be cool for C++ to have this feature. But I, get, I don't know if that's possible. Because you, in C++, like, doing um, powers is actually quite a pain. Because you need like a pow and then it has like a function call. And here it's just supported by default, what's really cool. Right. Yeah, concatenation. Huh. Right. This is this is really cool as well, right? Like you can just multiply it by a number and then you get it gets concatenated ten times between each other. Okay. Sure. Huh. So I'm guessing the list would, yeah, it would print the first one. It's just an array. Okay, so we can just simply add arrays. Okay. Um, just a string file to support forming new list without repeating sequence. Huh. So this would print the same list three times. Okay. Huh. Those are some really actual, really cool things. Um, all right, so we need to create two lists. Sure. Um, which contain 10 instances of the variable x, and yeah. Sure, that, so that would be times 10, and this would be times 10, and this would be x, uh, x list plus y uh, list, right? And that should run. Uh, no, okay. should work right because we should be just able to multiply the list i think oh no okay right it's x times 10 right yep 
yeah, so that works. And then this would be uh, X list plus Y uh, list, right? I think. Okay, that works. So 10 objects, 10 objects, pick list contains one. Almost there, output. Okay, cool. So how is this doing? Right, so list.count, okay. And so there's just a count operator. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, string formatting. Um, Python uses C style string formatting. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is literally just C, okay. In this sense, okay. To use two more. Okay, this is actually interesting. So in C, we can just supply um, all of them like next to each other with variadic arguments, but I guess here we can't. So we say we have a string, we have a float, uh, so we have name and age, or sorry, um, an integer. And then we say we have a tuple. Uh, so, so this is the arguments here, and then we create a tuple. Okay. And here it's the same, but then, okay. Huh. The string which returns from the rep method of the objects from it, for example, okay, so. So we'll actually try to actually Print out this list, okay. So it's basically operator overloading, kind of, okay. Um, so str the strings are numbers, integers, floating point numbers. Um, oh, okay, right. So percent x slash percent x would be hex, okay. Uh, you need to format the string, yeah. Sure, so that would be hello plus hello John Doe. Oh, I need to uh, format the, uh, the data. Format string, so And this could be, this would be data. Oh, okay, wait, yeah, yeah no, I'm stupid. So this would be, it would put you put in parentheses, right? Yeah, format string. Oh, I didn't actually realize this. So what does this print, right? So this just prints the, um, Oh, why is that not allowed? Oh, right, we don't have... Uh... Um, so if we just do this, right? This just prints hello. Yeah, okay. So then if I do... Uh, percent data. Okay. So then I say percent s. Um, so that would be a string hashtag, or sorry, uh, percent s for another string, because we want John Doe, and then we want a string, what would be dot your current balance is a dollar sign, and then we would say percent d, right? I think this shouldn't be spaced. Okay. So does this run? I'm guessing not, yeah. Invalid syntax. So I'm guessing this would need to be wrapped into a string. So that would be plus this, right? Ooh, okay, now this is very invalid syntax. Okay, let's copy this to this, right? 
so we have potentially some uh, some help. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, we have a. Um, we're missing some things. Okay, so this should be good, I think. Yeah, having highlighting is really really nice. Uh, no, I don't want to save it, of course. And then run. Uh, oh, I need to format this string, right? Uh, all right, so that would be the format string, sure. And then this is still the uh, the same. Okay, run. This is not running. Why? And this would then just be like this, right? Um, that should be okay, right? Yeah, hello. Oh, okay. Right, no, no, I see the issue. Run. Your... Right, so it prints, hello, John Doe. Your current balance is... Right. Oh, yeah. So, the only difference, I, it seems, is that I... Oh, it wants this as a string. Okay. And not a, as an integer. And then here a space. Okay. No. Hello. String, string, dot. Your current... Oh, I can't spell. Your current... Okay. What is this still the difference? Dollar sign percent s. I literally have the same as you now. Oh. Dots. Okay. Now it's the extra term. Okay, but I got the principle. Sure. Next. That's actually tripping me quite up because I'm used to in a printf if you want like a number, you're going to have to use the percent w uh, percent d and not the percent s because that's for like chars right but sure i can live with that okay so next up is basic string operations um yeah so strings are of text yeah they can be they can be anything right sure as long as they're between quotes uh, as you can see, the first thing, yeah, simple sentences. The sentence was sorted by Python as a string. However, instead of immediately printing the string out, we will explore various things that you can do to them. You can use single quotes to sign a string. However, you will face problems if the value assigned itself contains a single quote. Okay, yeah. For example, for example, to assign the string, the bracket single quotes are, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so this doesn't work because... Uh, you you using single quotes, so this works. But okay, uh, that prints out oh, twelve because hello world is twelve characters long. Okay, yeah. So oh, huh? Uh, a string hello world, and then print a string. One two three four. Oh, sorry, this is Len. Okay, right. Sorry, I was reading it wrongly. I was reading as it was the next sample, but that completely doesn't work right. So we say Len, what is just the length of the string, I'm guessing. And then, yeah, so that's 12, 12 characters long and, yeah, punctuation spaces. Okay. And this prints out four because it we're searching for O and the person next is four. Yeah, no, it's zero. Okay. Yes, yeah, so there are three L's in this. Okay. So we can use count to do that. Okay. That's all really, really useful stuff. Um, For those with you silly fonts, that's lowercase L, not the number one. Uh, this counts. Yeah. Right. So, So we're printing three till seven. Okay, so we would be um, K 
character three. Yeah, so, uh, three, four, five, oh, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's it's from zero. Okay. So we print this. This is just a uh, substring. Okay. Very cool notation. So we just say, hey, we want a string, but only we only index three till seven. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Is there indexing? Um. Yeah. Okay. I get the colon. Right. So if I just do this, that would give me. This would be valid then as well, right? Yeah. So if I just do the colon, it's three till there. Okay. Till the end. Huh. Wait. What? So I can do. Min what happens if I do minus three colon then? Yeah, so I, I start minus three and then go to the end. Okay. Huh. That's very interesting. So what does this do? This prints L. Okay, so let's read this. This prints the characters three to seven, uh, skipping one character. Okay, so we skip two. Right, start, stop, step. Okay, so we start. Oh, okay. So we go from three till seven, but we step with two. Right. So this this would produce the same result then, right? Yeah, because the step is one. But then if the step is two, we would get, yeah, step, step, space. Okay. So if it's three, we should see LW. Okay. No, this is learn uh, Python says. It's a site to learn Python. No, I'm not stealing code. I'm learning code. Yeah, it's way more, more, more boring, right? Oh, but if the step size is two, then how are we getting Uh, oh. Just print the character of the string from 3 to 7, skipping one character. Okay. Sure. Oh, wait, it prints it, but oh, it skips one character. Sure. So if I do one, do we skip, still skip one then? No, because that produces the exact same result, right? Oh yeah, sorry, none of them, they both produce the same output, sure. There's no function like just that in a uh, reverse and see the reverse string, but with the above mentioned type of slice syntax, you can easily reverse a string like this, okay. Huh. Right, because this is saying start from the beginning till the end with a step size of minus one. Okay. So I could also do like minus, so minus, okay. So if I start like from three till the end and then step size of minus, this would only do uh, part of it, right? Oh, so if I do minus three, then it prints more of it, but we skip some of the later letters. Okay, that's really, really cool. Huh. That's some weird syntax. But that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Right, this. Um, yeah, so we have upper and lower. Okay. Um, and I'm guessing this is, yeah, just true or false. Okay. So we say start with hello and ends with as the okay. Um, this is to determine whether a string starts some yes or, or ends. Yeah, the first one will print true. Yeah, and then the second one will false. And then we have a string dot split. What splits I think on spaces. Um, what I think is a list now. So I think this would be four x in 
AF words and then one, two, three, four, and then print active. Right, I think that should work. No. Oh, after words, okay. Huh. Let's put this in Visual Studio Code and see what I'm doing wrong. 4x in. Let's see if this helps me, right? So it's in after what? Oh, so this is just a, yeah, but this is a array, right? This is a list. Oh, I see. Right, I, I don't know how to use loops, right? And this should print, yeah, hello world, right? Because it's now transforming into a list. So this misses a colon. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, length should be 20, length of S, uh, yeah, so how much is that length now, like, wait, why is length of S still 38? Right, wait, oh, 23, so we need 1, 2, 3, so that's 20, okay. How? That's 20 characters. What are you talking about? It literally says length of S is 20. Um, right, whatever. Um, uh, oh, wait, first occurrence should be... Uh, where the hell do we have even a... So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, five six seven so i think it would be like this right um uh, no can i not count that uh, wait, what? no that's oh okay Wait, but then this is taking, oh, um, right, and this, is... oh, this is taking the S, okay. Right, so we need to do a bunch of things, right? Okay, strings are awesome, and this just does everything, okay. Uh, let's just see what this, uh, what this code does. Um, so slicing, um, Yeah, okay, so sure. We just create a string with two A's, print uh slicing the first string in two bits, okay. Yeah, start to five. So we say zero to five, okay. Five till ten. And then the thirteenth would be twelve, okay. So with odd indexes, yeah, we start at one because we can start at zero, because that's technically even. And then we say step size two. So it would be one, three, five, etc. Okay. But everything to uppercase, yeah. So to upper, to lower, um, yeah, string, uh, ends with OME, okay. And yeah, so we split in three separate strings, okay. Cool. Next tutorial. Python is making. An awful lot of sense. I think the what I like about it is the simplicity, right? Like Python so far has a lot of um, nice things that are very, very simple to use, right? And I really appreciate that so far. Uh, so I was on conditions, right? Yeah. Okay. Conditions. Um. Yeah. Sure. So this is just. If statements, uh, yeah, and they'd have equal, equal, does not equal. Okay, same as, uh, so if name equals John or uh, name equals Rick. Okay, and they don't use the or. Does that work, though? The, the operator? 
I'm guessing not, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, so we need to use or and and. I do kind of like that. Okay. So the in. Right, because this is the in would be like iterator. Okay. So if name in in here, right. Right, so we check if the name exists in there. Okay. Yeah. So statement false and which statement false. So if statement is true, then do something. What is the false? Okay. Oh, we just do nothing. Okay, sure. So else if another statement is true, else if. Okay, so it's elif. Okay. False and else. False. Okay. So it does nothing. Cool. Uh, for example, if excess, yeah. Okay. And if this is three, then obviously it's not equal to two. Okay. Um, the is operator. Um, okay. This is important actually. A statement is evaluated true if one of the following is correct. The true Boolean, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here are some examples for which objects are considered as empty. An empty string, an empty list, a number zero. But what is the, oh, and four. Okay, right, yeah, I read it wrong, okay. Yeah, so this is true, okay. Yeah, right. So this evaluates true because they are um, equal, as in iteration, like the, the values, but they aren't the same instance. Okay. But if we do if y is x, then we do get true because y is now equal to x. Okay. That's cool. Um, yes, yeah, so a print not false. Okay. <coughs> All right. Yeah, I don't want to uh, play with the example. Um, so if first array and sure, so that's equal to one. So what is first array? Huh. Wait, so if first array, that's the list and, oh, right. So there needs to be something in the list, right? Okay. So if number is greater than 15, okay, let's actually do this, right? As this would be 16, first array, so that is correct if lang of second array equals true. No. Uh, yeah, so we have two elements here, right? The first array plus second array is five. So we would need three elements here. Okay. And if second number. So that would be zero. Run. Okay, cool. That was easy. So what is next? Um, loops. Okay, I'm actually very interested in this. And while we're at it, I kind of want to double check the um, the things. So we still have loops, functions, classes, dictionaries, and modules and packages to go. Okay. Then we have NumPy arrays, pandas basics, and then advanced topics, right? What I think is really cool, serialization, functions, or like uh, partial functions, code inspection, closures, decorators. Okay, these are all really interesting things. Okay. So what does like C++ have, right? So the burn basics would be for, yeah, okay. Recursion binary, binary trees, really? What would be what would they use binary trees for? Huh. 
Oh, it doesn't exist yet. Oof. Wait, do they have like other things pointers? Right, they do. Okay. Huh. Okay, we could actually add some stuff to this. Template meta programming. Yeah, it does it have multiple like No, that's a shame. Because this is so short. Um like we could actually do four pointers. They do have four pointers, but I feel so limiting structures. Okay. Huh. So what do I actually need to do for this? So what I need to do is, um, all right, to write a tutorial, simply create a markdown page in the development directory in the tutorials direction and link it in the welcome screen in the relevant section. After adding it, please make sure that it's linked correctly by running the Flask web server. To link the tutorial you have created, create a link from the page you would like to link, usually the welcome, yeah. Right, so there is missing things here. That would be cool to add, but Python seems to be like have a decent thing at least. But yeah, sorry, I got a bit distracted there. So does it have like other things for like because I wanted to learn shell as well, right? Yeah, it does have some cool stuff in here for shell. As SQL as well. Ooh, but yeah, it doesn't really have anything. Okay. Sorry, I got very, very distracted. Let's go to loop spec. Right. So simple iteration. Okay. Um, there's range and extrange functions, right? The range function returns a new list with numbers on that specified range, whereas extrange returns an iterator, which is more efficient. Okay. Right, so what's the difference, right? So in... Yeah, so we say for x in range five. Okay, so right. Um in range, okay, three six. Okay. Sure. Oh wait, but what does this last do? Um so this is printed three. Yeah, five. okay, so this is the beginning and step again. Okay. While loops while count. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Break and continue. Yeah, okay. So for X, yeah, so we skip all um we skip all odd. Right? No, we skip all even, sorry. Oops. Um unlike language like C C plus we can use the else for loop when the condition of for a while statement fails, then the second code part else execute okay if a break statement is executed inside the loop then the else part is kicked okay right okay so well count less than five prints else okay huh cool so if we break out of the loop this doesn't happen so yeah so the second thing um okay huh right loop two so that would be for uh i in 
range. Sorry, so in numbers. Okay. So for I in numbers. Okay. And one, two, three, four. And then if y is greater than at two, three, seven, then break. And then uh, on the same line, we do print i. Uh, no, no comment. Right, run. Oh, right, I forgot. Yeah, we need the uh, the end bracket. Oh, okay, and we do the same for the if. Okay, I'm guessing that's to. Ooh, okay. It did not like that. Huh. Define an another object number. Huh. So what did they want to do? Oh, I only want even numbers. Okay, sorry. So, if this is the case, then yeah. If um, y uh, modulo modulo two is equal to so, if this is the case, then true. Uh, sorry, then continue. Because um, so if not. Right. So I'm guessing this is the same, right? So if number, but I don't like this, right? So they say, don't put any numbers that come after. Okay, I can get that, sure. So if number equals two, three, seven. Uh, oh, wait, but these are not necessarily, oh, these aren't in order. Okay, sure, never mind. Um, Your break, so if number equals one. Right. But we can just check, I think, for uh, if it's either, because it's going to be 0, 1, right? So we can just check for that directly. Um, no, I think we don't actually have to do the not. We just say if this, right? Because it's going to be 0, that's equal to false, or it's going to be 1, that's equal to true. Um, and then for the last part, we just do print number. Okay. Sure. But I'm not going to haggle with the specific syntax they want because that seems like a bit of a uh, of a pain okay so how do I write functions this is going to be important because you can't really write a program without functions can you um, yeah so we create a block head okay yeah and of course it's gonna fail because yeah It's a block keyword, block name, argument, argument, okay. Block keyword should already know, so it's if, for, and while, okay. It's awkward, def, okay. So we define my function, okay. And then we say uh, my function, right? I think, to just run it. Uh, and this would be on a new line. Run. Hello from my function. Okay, very simple. So, and then this takes uh, define my function, username, greetings, print app, this. And then we pass in the this is a tuple. Okay. And that runs, and then we just call that. Okay. So, some two numbers. Um, okay, so we don't actually need to define return values. Okay, that's very interesting. Could that mean that I could theoretically... Uh, Daniel, thank you for the follow. Right, so what I'm curious about, right? If we have the fine test, right? It takes no arguments, but it does... Uh... Okay, so we could do return... Um... Right, so we have int a. Uh, oh, sorry, so we have a, 
equals to zero and we have b equal to zero right and then we say if uh, a is equal to zero then return uh, a I uh, return a and else return a b was it like this the return thing um no right yeah you can't return multiple values can you because i'm guessing this would just give me an error right like this is shouldn't compile and then we say test uh, for short prints test so what does this do Oh, right, and we need to call test, of course. So what does this do? So print zero, okay. So if A is equal to one, that... <laughs> okay, that's... I did not expect that at all. So we can actually do this. This is actually valid syntax. Huh. I really didn't expect that to work. Huh, that's really, really cool. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, we just call them by calling the arguments. Yeah. I'm not really going to, going to go into depth with that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I know what functions are used for. Class and objects. Okay. Objects get their uh, variables or functions from classes. Classes are essentially a template. Yeah. Okay. So we have class, my class, variable, blah, define function, function, and it sticks in self. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to run. Uh, so how do we call this? Would this just be function? I, I don't think that would work, right? Yeah. So we could do, I think... Um, oh, I'm guessing it would be... Uh, uh, object. And that would be equal to my class, right? And then I think we do object dot function right does that work just no that doesn't work i'm getting we we get there later right we'll explain why you have to include self as a parameter a bit later first assign the above class template to object yeah so we just say yeah so my object is this side this class right um okay I got close. Oh, so it is the uh, the dot. Okay. Yeah. So this just runs because we just get the the variable, right? Um. Yeah. So we can just create multiple objects, and they would just be all be copies. Okay. And I can reassign this one. Okay. So that is how I do the function. Okay. But that just means that here I made a typo. Oh, yeah, I just made a typo. Right. Oh, my eyes. Right. Uh, so this, this runs, right? Okay. Okay, cool. So it, it's pretty similar to C++ in that regard okay Whew. i think that was really it right okay no no we still have the dictionaries to go okay with key values okay a key a string number okay yeah so a phone book okay and um, oh we define a dictionary like this sure i would say phone book john is equal to this okay and this just prints all of those. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, right. So they can be initialized in place like this. Okay. Sure. Iterating over dictionary. So we say for name, comma, number in phone book dot items. Okay. 
Now we say, yeah, this, and we need to, to pull them to print them. Okay. Removing a value. Okay, so we do delete phone book John. Okay, so this would then delete John's number. Okay. Or phone book dot pop. Okay. So I'm guessing the delete is uh, more generic and the pop is uh, dictionary specific. Okay. Ha, huh, there's definitely something wrong here. Um, okay, dictionaries are very simple. They're, they kind of just look like maps and unordered maps from C++. Um, all right. In programming modules, a piece of software that has specific functionality, for example, when building a ping pong game, one module would be responsible for the game logic, and another module module would be responsible for drawing the game on screen. Each module, different file, was going to be edited separately. Okay, so we're just getting two files now. Okay, that's really, really cool. Um, dot file extension, yeah. Sure, so we would have game and would have draw, okay. And I'm guessing this would, uh, yeah, invalidate the text, because this is obviously not going to work. Um... Game.py import the draw module, right? Um, right. The Python script game.py will implement the game. It will use the function game draw from the yeah. Draw. Sure. And we just import draw. Okay. And I guess we don't need the pi. Okay, cool. So define play game, define main result. Okay. If name equals main. Ah. That's interesting. That's that's so this this one is weird to me. Oh, and then we say draw. Okay, so this is kind of like an oh. Right, so this is this is very interesting, right? So this um, this draw acts like a kind of namespace as well. So if we import something else, right, then, uh, oh no, sorry, we're a bit far. Um, where was it? Okay, yeah. So this acts like a kind of a namespace. So it would be from there, okay. Yeah, and we'd have draw game, clear screen. Yeah, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You may have noticed that when importing a module, um, the .byc file appears when it's compiled in, com um, which is a compiled Python file. Okay, Python compiles fine into Python bytecode so that it won't have to parse the files each time a module is loaded. Okay, if a .byc file exists, it gets loaded into the .py file, but this process is transparent to the user. Okay, sure. We may also import the function draw game directly into the main script namespace by using from right so from draw import game draw or draw game okay oh, okay so we say oh okay right so from draw we import draw game and now that can be used like normal okay and it's obviously not going to compile but i get the principle so this is kind of like okay from the draw library from the draw module I want to import this specific function into my code, what is draw game. Okay. And that way we can just use it without the namespace, but I don't think I would like that. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so I can just import everything, sure. That I could see the use for this one though. Because the specific one is kind of like, eh, but this I could see, right? So if the, um, you have a, a separate module, but you kind of want everything to be part of this, I could kind of see the use for it. Okay, custom importer name, okay. Right, so we can do if visual mode import draw as draw okay so we say import draw visual as draw and then 
Oh, okay. Ah, okay. So these would be different implementations, but the we can use the same namespace. Okay. Huh. That's very, very interesting. Huh. Okay, we're now actually getting into the cool stuff. Python instead of the uh, the basics, right? Um, for some modules loaded in a running Python script, it's initialized by executing the code in a module once. If another module in your code imports the same module again, it will not be loaded twice but only once. Okay. Huh. Wait. So everything is a singleton. Okay. Let me reread this. The first time modules loaded into a running Python script, it's initialized by executing the code in module once. If another module in your code imports the same module again, it will not be loaded twice. Okay, so everything is a singleton. Huh. Right. Yeah. Right, so I say the event name will Python path to, right. So say slash who Python game.py okay that's kind of interesting as well oh right as well execute game pi and we'll enable the script to load modules from the foo directory as well as the local directory okay another method is sys.path.append function you may execute it before running the import command okay right okay so we can say append slash foo and it will search in that as well okay uh, this looks better to use to me because the the syntax is kind of weird in my eyes. What does the pen? Okay, that's a lot of things. That's good, I guess. Okay. Exp okay. Oh, this is this is interesting. Build in commands. Okay. Um, two very important function come in handy when the dare and help function. Okay. If we want to import the module your URL lib, okay, which needs to read data from URLs. Okay. Wait, really? No. Does that what does this do? This this looks so we can just read URLs. No way. So it gets a directory, right? Huh. Does this do anything? The uh so this prints it again, right? I don't think the uh, these do anything. Um, yeah, this still seems to be doing the same. Okay. Let's see what happens if we run this in. We just do, okay, so but then do these do something? And then. No, okay, so these, these don't do anything at all. Interesting. Huh. So we say dear. Huh. Well, we've put, okay. So let, let's let's see if we can decipher what this does. Um. So we can look for which functions are implemented in each model. Oh, okay. Oh, so this is going to write out. Oh, wait a second. Right, so we don't need this, do we? So if we run this, it's going to print out. Right, so if I do print and then dare your lip, right? With this print, yeah, it prints the, the building functions in there. Okay, that's really, really awesome. So we have the loader with the name of the package, okay. Oh.
Interesting. Huh. Right, so we can do help. Help. Print. And this is just a thing like this, right? And then we just run this. Huh. And then help name. What does this do? Hey, that's help a module main. Name main date. Huh. That's really awesome. Okay. And if I do like uh doc Okay, whatever. But well, that's that's cool. So the dare I think just gives us a, a thing, right? But yeah, oh wait, these took like way less than there should be, right? So it's the lost one is your retriever. No, it might actually be all of them. Okay, whatever. Although, huh? Interesting. So I'm, I'm, it doesn't quite make it clear to me, right? The deer function. Deer, okay. Without argument, returns a list of names in the current local scope with an argument, right, okay. So the name, so the names in the module, okay. Sure. Oh, okay. I don't quite get this. So, so if I do just this, right? So dare, uh, and then what arguments was it? Like these, right? And then, right, and then we don't do the, we just do this, and then we pass in the arguments. And then we don't do this one, right? So what does this do? Uh, no, okay. That doesn't work, okay. Oh, that, no, I don't want to open mail. Oops, was bad. Um, right, let's see if I... Right, yeah, so this would just give me... Okay. Oh, it tells you a lot of stuff in here. Okay. It tells me class. Who? Okay. So I, I think this seems more like a debug really function than me. Yeah. That seems kind of odd to use, but sure. Uh, writing packages. Okay, each package in Python is a directory which must contain a special file called initpy. Okay, this file can be empty and indicates that the directory it contains is a Python package. Okay, so it can be imported the same way as a module can be imported. Okay, if we create a directory called foo, which marks the package name, we can then create a module that the package is called bar. We also, must not forget to add the init file. Okay, sure. So we can then import foo.bar, 
because it's going to see the foo folder and then be like, oh, we want to import foo.var. Okay. So this is basically just a namespace or import foo from. So from foo import bar. Okay. So we're getting this syntax now again. Okay. Uh, in the first method, we must use the foo prefix whenever we access the module bar. In the second method, we don't because we import the module from to our module. Okay. I don't like that too much. Uh, the inner pack can also decide which module the package exports. The API will keeping all the modules internal by overriding the all variable like so. Okay. So all is a list. Okay. Sure. Exercise. Um, So wouldn't that just then be print there, uh, print there, Ray? Wouldn't that just be it? So what what is the solution, right? So find members from members in. Okay, so we oh okay, right from members in there. If find in member. Okay. Sure. And then, right, what does this do if we run it? Run. Right, so, okay, so we have find all, find enter. Okay. I see, that makes sense. So I think that was the, the learn the basic settings. And then there are some more advanced tutorials that look interesting and the data science tutorials. So I think I will look into those some other stream, but I think for today I'm going to call it a day here because it's very late here and I'm quite tired. So I want to thank you all for joining in the stream and I hope you all learned something about Python just like I have. Um,